Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel High Church. I'm so glad that you have joined us in spirit from wherever you are for a time of worship this morning. Today is Sunday, September 20th, the fourth Sunday in Advent. I'd like to give a special welcome to anyone who might be joining for the first time today and a thank you to Sandy B. Lynn for being our liturgist and to Jean and Art Holden for leading us in our Advent candle lighting. Um, I'm gonna start us off with a couple of announcements as we always do. Our giving tree is still open. We're collecting new essential items like socks, underwear, gloves, hats, et cetera, from Marion's Closet and Common Threads in uh, Barberton and Wadsworth. Uh, please leave donations in the tote by the church entrance uh, by Christmas Eve. Uh, again, we're not doing our traditional Christmas post office this year, um, but there still is a few sets of mailing labels. If, if uh, you still have a few more days to get your cards out. Um, and there's also mailing labels in the Wednesday update if you just wanna print them out quickly at your house. Um, and finally, oh, two announcements. Um, I don't know if you've heard but for the first time in, um, I think they said 800 years, we will be able to see the Bethlehem star tomorrow night. Um, if you look right after uh, sundown southwest, uh, to the southwest, you should be able to see the Bethlehem star, um, which is apparently... Um, not actually a star, but is, um, and I can't even recall which two planets, one of you I'm sure knows and can tell us during the coffee hour, but two planets are going to be in alignment this year, tomorrow night for the first time in 800 years. And it will appear to be the Bethlehem star. So um, uh, if you're able tomorrow night, go out and look out and see uh, the Bethlehem star at sunset in the Southwest. And finally, Christmas Eve this year, um, sadly, is still going to be by Zoom. Um, we're gonna be using the same link that we're using right now. Um, and that link will be in the Wednesday midweek newsletter. And although it's gonna be different, it's also, um, going to be, a, I think, a very, very special evening. So I hope you all will attend. So many of you have um, agreed to contribute your talents uh, to our service by singing or playing instruments um, or doing readings. And so it's going to be a very um, community-led service. Helen and I will be delivering luminary bags, candles, to light during the Silent Night hymn, a bulletin, and a few other goodies this week. If you already have an Advent wreath from us, you are on our list and will get Christmas Eve delivery automatically. If you don't have a wreath from the church and would like to have candles and a luminary bag for Christmas Eve, um, just write, uh, type your name in the chat box and the word candle and we will make sure you are on our delivery list this week. Um, with that, our scriptures today are Isaiah 7, chapters 10 through 16, and the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Our hymns are, O come all ye faithful, and love came down at Christmas. And now for our housekeeping rules, as you know, your mics are muted to cut down on confusion, but still use your voice to participate in this morning's gathering. Oh, and I wanted to add one other thing about, I'm sorry, about Christmas Eve service. Um, we'll be sending out instructions on how to put your, uh, your uh, display, whatever you're using, your phone, your iPad, your computer in gallery view, so that when we light our candles, I'm hoping that you will all put your cameras on and dim your room and we'll be able to look in gallery mode and see all of us lighting our candles and we'll unmute our mics and sing Silent Night 
together. So I think that should be a really special moment on Christmas Eve. But for now, our mics are muted. And someplace on your screen, you'll find your chat box. And if you click, click to open it, that's where you put in your prayer requests and your candle requests. At lesson time, we're using our own Bibles. So I hope you have your Bible with you and a candle to light right now. And now let's move into a time of worship. Each week, we prepare ourselves by reminding our minds and our hearts and our bodies that even though we're still physically in our homes, that now we are gathering as the body of Christ and entering onto holy ground. And we do this by placing our right hand on our hearts and our left hand on our bellies. And we breathe into the count of four and out to the count of more than four. Taking another big breath in, breathing in the presence of God. And breathing out any stress or anxiety we might be feeling. One final breath in to breathe in God's peace. And a breath out to rid ourselves of any leftover anxiety. We remember that no matter where we are, that God is with us, ever drawing us near to the spirit of oneness and love. If you have a candle, take a moment to light it as I light the candles here on our altar. Will you pray with me? Source of love, we come to you this morning seeking the good tidings that you bring. As we gather this day, O oh Lord, though physically scattered, we are united in spirit. As we seek to feel your presence in this hour, we know that you are seeking us in every single hour. Help us to be attentive to your word and feeling your loving presence in this time of worship. Amen. And now I invite you to join me in our introit. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. We have been looking for a sign. Emmanuel, God, God with, with us. us. We have been waiting for a savior. Emmanuel, Emmanuel God, God with, with us. us. The time is near. Can it be? Emmanuel, Emmanuel God, God with us. us. Come, let us worship the God of sign, wonder, and promise. Amen. Amen.
Sunday, we lit the candle of joy. We light it and the candles of hope and peace. Again, as we remember that Christ, who was born in Bethlehem, will come again to fulfill all of God's promises and bring us everlasting peace and joy. The fourth candle of Advent is the candle of love. God's love is perfect love. It holds nothing back. God in love gives us everything we need to live a life of hope and peace. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus shows us God's perfect love. This is what love is like. Love is patient. Love is kind and envies no one. Love is never boastful or conceited, rude or selfish. Love is not quick to take offense. It keeps no records of wrongs. It does not gloat over other people's troubles, but rejoices in the right, the good, and the true. There is nothing that love cannot face. There is no limit to its faith, to its hope, to its endurance. Love never ends. We light the candle of love to remind us that Jesus brings us God's love and shows us how to love others. Love is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the love we find in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. <clears throat> Thank you, God, for the love you give us. We ask that as we wait for all of your promises to come true and for Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your love with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. <laughs> Please join me in the prayer of confession. Lord, we confess that we are rushing headlong into Christmas. It's only five days away and we still have so much to do. Our preparations are far from complete and we are exhausted. We wish this whole thing were over so that we could rest. Forgive our shortcomings and our short-sightedness. You have poured upon us blessing after blessing daily reminding us of your love and presence, yet we have chosen to jump onto this greased slide into Christmas. Give us patience, slow us down. Remind us of the ways in which you are present with us, not in the wrapped packages, the abundance of food, but in the love and compassion that is brought to all. Forgive us, we pray. Make us truly ready to receive your love and the gift of the Christ child. Amen.
light of God's love shines upon each of us in the gift of God's love, Jesus Christ. This is given for you. Rejoice. You are loved by God now and forever. Amen. On the fourth Sunday in Advent, our hearts prepare to feel the love of the coming baby Jesus. Let's watch as the Bible Project folks explain what it means to be in Christian love. So if you've heard of Jesus, you probably know about one of his famous teachings called the Golden Rule. Do to others what you would want them to do to you. And this, actually, is a restatement of something else that Jesus said, that the meaning of life is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, that's really beautiful, but what does he mean exactly by the word love? It's an unclear word in English, because you can love your mom and you can love pizza. And if the word love means the same thing in both of those cases, your mom's going to feel real bad. So what did Jesus mean in his language? Well, first of all, this love your neighbor phrase is a quotation from the Hebrew scriptures, where the word for love is ahava. However, the language Jesus spoke and taught in from day to day, it was a cousin language of Hebrew, that is Aramaic, in which the word for love is rachma. But then, as Jesus' followers spread his teachings around the world, they translated them into Greek using the word agape. But here's what's fascinating. The earliest followers of Jesus who wrote the books of the New Testament in Greek, they didn't learn the meaning of agape by looking it up in ancient dictionaries. Rather, they looked to the teachings of Jesus and the story of his life to redefine their very concept of love. So one time, Jesus was asked about the most important command in the Jewish scriptures. And he first quoted from the ancient prayer in the Torah called the Shema. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. So love for God is the most important thing. But then Jesus quickly followed up by saying another command from the Torah was also the most important, to love your neighbor as yourself. So which is the most important, loving God or loving your neighbor? Jesus' answer is yes. To ask the question means you don't get his point. For Jesus, they are two sides of the same coin. Your love for God will be expressed by your love for people and vice versa, they're inseparable. And so this makes it clear that for Jesus, agape love is not primarily a feeling for someone else that happens to you, like our phrase, I fell in love. For Jesus, love is action. It's a choice that you make to seek the well-being of people other than yourself. Jesus also went on to teach that genuine love for God and others means seeking people's well-being without expecting anything in return, especially from people who are in difficult situations who can't repay you even if they wanted to. According to Jesus, this kind of generous love reflects the very heartbeat of God. And he took this even further. Jesus said that the ultimate standard of authentic love is how well you treat the person that you can't stand. Or in his words, you shall love your enemy and do good to them, expecting nothing nothing in return. For Jesus, this kind of enemy-embracing love imitates the very character of God himself. Now, we wouldn't be talking about Jesus still today if he had only said things like love your enemy. This is how he actually lived. Jesus was constantly helping and serving the people around him in very practical and tangible ways. And he consistently moved towards poor and hurting people who couldn't benefit him in return. He showed love for the forgotten ones, the people who usually fall through the cracks. And when Jesus eventually marched into Jerusalem, he made himself an enemy of the leaders of his people by accusing them of hypocrisy and corruption. But then instead of attacking his enemies to overthrow them, he allowed them to kill him. Jesus died for the selfishness and corruption of his enemies because he loved them. After Easter morning, Jesus and then his followers claimed that it was the power of God's love for the world that was revealed in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. As the Apostle Paul put it, God demonstrated his own agape for us in this. While we were still sinners, the Messiah died for us. Or in the words of the Apostle John, God's own agape was revealed when he sent his one and only son into the world so that through him we could have life. And for John, then, this leads naturally to the conclusion, beloved ones, if that's how God has loved us, then we ought to show love for one another. So Christian faith involves trusting that at the center of the universe is a being overflowing with love for his world, which means that the purpose of human existence is to receive this love that has come to us in Jesus and then to give it back out to others, creating an ecosystem of others-focused, self-giving love. And that's the New Testament meaning of agape love.
Our first lesson is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 7, verses 10 through 16. Listen as the Spirit speaks to her church. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Mm -hmm. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring on you and on your people and on your ancestral house such days as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed for Judah, the king of Assyria. May God bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Listen now if, and see if you can hear the self-giving love of Joseph in Matthew's opening of his gospel. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the word for God's people. May God bless all who hear it, who keep it, and who share it. Let's pray. Lord of love, in these coming moments, May the words of my lips and the reflections of our hearts be true to your eternal word that you would have lived within us. Amen. It was Advent several years ago when a pastor friend of mine was hoping to counter all the commercial frenzy swirling around his children and to teach them what the season was really all about. So he sat down at the kitchen table with his youngest son in the middle of December and they began a project of assembling a cardboard cutout nativity 
seen a stable and a major, baby Jesus, Mary, Joseph, sheep and cows, shepherds and the magi. Fold on the dotted line, the directions said. Place tab A in slot B. You know, well, easier read than done. At least for me, I can imagine the mess I would have made, of course. And within a few minutes, his too was a disaster. Nothing worked as it was intended. Nothing looked like the picture that was on the box. The pastor dad had all but taken over, but he wasn't faring any better than his four-year-old son. The kitchen table was littered with torn, bent, spineless figures, just kind of wilted over. Pieces were frayed and taped together. The father in his frustration was close to just clearing the whole table and trashing the entire project. And the little boy was certainly less than impressed. So surveying the scene on the table, the four-year-old who was supposed to be learning the real meaning of Christmas, that Jesus is God's son, said, so daddy, where is God in all this mess? A poignant Christmas memory, which also remains the quintessential Advent question. Where exactly is God in all this mess? You see, somewhere someone sits up half the night, a long time dedicated employee whose job was eliminated the year before the year end uh, of the fiscal accounting. And he thinks, where is God amidst this disruption? Somewhere a spouse grips the hand of their beloved awaiting the news of a diagnosis. Where is God, they wonder, in this uncertainty? Somewhere, a family gathers around the bed of a loved one at the end of a long journey. Where is God, they wonder, in the midst of our loss, in the midst of our particular grief? Or we open the paper to, or pull out our phones to read the news of the week and we wonder, where on earth is God in the midst of all of this chaos? Our Advent claim is that God is right here in the middle of the mess with us. And God is in the middle of the mess with Joseph and Mary. Do you remember the first thing the angel says to Joseph? He says, do not be afraid. The angel assured Joseph that Mary's child would be God with us. But little did he know how close, how real, how vulnerable the God that Mary was about to bear was willing to become on our behalf. Madeline Langle describes the birth of Christ in a messy world in a way that wows me every time I hear it. In her poem, she says, He did not wait till the world was ready, till people and nations were at peace. He came when the heavens were unsteady and prisoners cried out for release. He did not wait for the perfect time. He came when was the, the need was deep and great. And she closes with these words, in the mystery of the word made flesh, the master of the stars, was born. We cannot wait till the world is sane to raise our songs with joyful voice, for to share our grief, to touch our pain. He came with love. Rejoice, rejoice. Year after year, we gather to hear the story of Jesus' birth, even when the world is not completely sane. We raise our songs throughout Advent with joyful voice because although we know sorrow and despair and uncertainty, love has been birthed into the messiness of our world, right into the middle of it, in fact. So if it seems hard to live into the joy of Christmas this year, 
because of the heavy burdens you bear or the messiness of your life or your family's life or the pain of being physically distanced from those you love, know this, God does not wait. God does not wait until the world is ready or the perfect time or the perfect peace. God does not wait for pandemics to end. God does not wait for all the messes to be tidied up. God does not wait because Jesus is being born where people need him most. God makes God's home in the messiest of places, a stable in the messiest of times, under the control of the Roman Empire, and with the most ordinary people, a teenage girl, her fiance, and a couple of shepherds. Jesus is being born right now where we need him most, in the messes, in the hard places, in the dark and desperate places, in the lonely and lost places, in the places and with the people who seem too far gone to be saved. Jesus is born into exactly those kinds of places and he spends his life with the most vulnerable and ostracized and brokenhearted of people. And it is through the birth of this child into the mess of the first century Bethlehem and into the mess of our 2020 world that compels us to complain, proclaim, love is running through the streets. Emmanuel, God is with us and God with skin on. God who pitched God's tent and lived among us is here. God has become one of us. And today, despite the messes that surround us and the pain that we feel, we know that God has become one of us and is in the middle of the mess with us, face mask and all. And so we raise our songs with joyful voice for love has come. And for this, we say, thanks be to God, love has come. And all God's people say, amen.
Matthew tells us the story today of God's great gift of Jesus. While the world around us is deeply into the Christmas gift giving season, as the season of Advent comes to a close, let us remember the church by sending gifts for the church to use in God's name for the healing and hope of the world. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we anticipate and await your coming to us this Advent season. We believe the unbelievable message that in love, you came to be one of us, a person both human and divine. We rejoice that you have not kept your distance from us, but have shortened the distance between us and you through the birth of your son, Jesus. As like John the Baptist, we prepare the way for the celebration of your coming to us at Christmas. Remind us that you are not a God separated and aloof from your creations. Teach us anew that you have not abandoned us, but that you have surrounded us with love, peace, hope, and joy, and good news, and have called us to live a life worthy of your ideals and purposes. God, you are the atmosphere of our lives and the environment by which our lives are sustained. Finally, God, you remind us that the world is not a cold and empty place, but a place filled with your presence and power and love. Help us to be bearers of your light in the midst of the darkness that often surrounds us. Loving God, we pray this morning for those we know and for those throughout our community and world who are weathered by illness or grief or injustice or unrest and the many other ways and kinds of suffering that we experience. Today, we especially remember the family of Sean Donor, the family of Don Dinkley, the family of Maxine, and Cindy Maxson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Debbie Berry, Mary Fuller, prayers of praise for King Kim Yon Yanni, Rose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lauren, Cordray and Miller family, Lisa and Jerry, and Sujanta. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jim Cotton, Bud and Anita, Jean and Ralph. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sarah, Kennard and Jean, Bob and Sue and Caitlin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Family of Betty Raridan, Marvin Webb, Robin Ashley, her daughters, and Bob Bowser. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Angie, Matt, and Diane Houlihan. And Lord, we also lift up Rich Little. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, may the good news of your compassion and grace bring peace and hope. Help us to make our world, our homes, our communities and our church and our lives worthy to receive the Christ who comes to us with open arms and with boldness. Grant that we may seek after Christ's shalom 
and follow after Christ's justice so that his kingdom may be born again into our lives. Oh God, give us the spirit of this Advent season that our lives may more closely shape and resemble the life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Make us ready and deserving of your coming. We thank you for your love and ask these things in the name of the one you sent to heal and free us, our Savior Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to join me in our closing hymn, Love Came Down at Christmas. <laughs> Now go forth with a dream in your soul and love in your heart, knowing that God's promises are always fulfilled. The time is almost here. Get ready to wonder. Let us go in peace. Amen. <laughs>